Brothers and sisters, it's a great joy to be together, especially during this Mass, uh, during Catholic Schools Week. All of you who are here and all joining us uh, by live stream as we celebrate today the Feast of St. Blaise, the Bishop and Martyr, with a special blessing of throats, uh, one of those great little Catholic traditions of our church, of our family of God. And so let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, the supplications your people make under the patronage of the martyr Saint Blaise, and grant that they may rejoice in peace in this present life and find help for life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter to Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. You have also forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the, disciple of the, the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as di discipline. God treats you as his sons, for what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy but for pain. Yet later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be dislocated but healed. Strive for peace with everyone and for that holiness which without no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one be deprived of the grace of God, that no bitter root spring up and cause trouble, through which may, many may have become defiled. The word of the Lord. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. The Lord's kindness Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all of my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. As a father whose compassion is on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows that how we formed, he remembers that we are dust. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. The kindness of the Lord is from eternity to eternity towards those who fear him, and his justice towards children's children among those who keep his covenant. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given to him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there apart from curing a few sick people by laying hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Start with a question, and you don't have to raise your hands. I'm not going to call on anyone uh, because we have a special little thing we're going to do in Mass today. I want to save a little time for that. But does your family have any special or even kind of silly traditions? Just little things like, I can't remember if I've brought it up before, but my family has this thing. You know, I have a, a little cabin up north my mom and dad do, and at a certain point, uh, my mom made it known that she can't stand it when my dad, he has this habit, she can't stand it when he leaves the dish towel sitting on the counter instead of hanging it up on the handle, right? So what I began to do when I left the cabin and I knew they were coming is I would purposely put the dish towel on the counter, not folded, just, just to get my mom a little bit, right? Just to tease a little bit. And we know those things are not, in fact, teasing or trying to annoy something. They might, they kind of are, but right? it's, it actually becomes a sign of love, right? Kind of a little thing we do to show our love, even though it's a little bit annoying and it's kind of a teasing and it's kind of a joke, right? Little things like that happen in families, don't they? Maybe little words or phrases that you use with the people you love. Just little ways of doing things that only members of the family understand. And in our gospel today, we hear about being the family of Jesus, that Jesus had a family, right? The gospel talks about Jesus' brothers and sisters. What it actually is referring to is probably cousins of Jesus. And we think about our own families and what a joy and what a, a blessing it is to be part of a human family. Now, we know, too, that the church is a family. We become the family of God in the church. And so the church, even the church as a family, as it naturally would, has little traditions. It has big traditions like the Mass and the Eucharist that we gather to celebrate today, which is the greatest of our traditions. Right? It's a tradition that goes all the way back to the Last Supper when Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in memory of me. But we also have little traditions and today, on this Feast of St. Blaise, we have one of them that might be a little bit more in that category, like leaving the dish towel on the counter, right? It's one of those things about being Catholic, about our beautiful Catholic faith, that might seem a little odd. As I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, St. Blaise was a bishop in the fourth century in Armenia, and he was a martyr. He died for the faith. He shed his blood for the faith like the letter to the Hebrews talked about, shedding our blood for the love of the Lord. And St. Blaise was known to have brought about some miraculous healings. He was a holy bishop. He was a great pastor, a great shepherd, and he was able to bring about healings, physical healings, we believe, or the, so the tradition tells us. And so he became famous throughout the church, kind of in the Middle Ages, and what eventually happened, because his feast day comes right after, on February 3rd, right after February 2nd, which is the feast of the presentation where we bless those candles. We call it Candlemas. Last night we blessed those candles. There became th this tradition, this tradition developed, this family tradition, if you will, of blessing the throats, blessing people's throats. 
protecting against illness. And so what it involves is taking two candles and the priest or the deacon lays them on the throat of the person receiving the blessing, not lit, usually, right? We, won't, we don't light the candles. And there's a prayer, and it goes like this. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, bishop and martyr, may God deliver you from every disease of the throat and from every other disease in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So our Catholic faith is full of these little traditions that might seem a little odd, but they actually have a deep meaning, right? In the same way that leaving the dish towel on the counter might seem a little odd and have not very much meaning to someone who doesn't understand, who's not part of the family, the family members know that there's actually love behind that, right? It speaks to us of that love that binds us together in the family. All of those traditions in our Catholic faith and our Catholic faith is full of them. You know, the St. Blaise blessing, our medals, rosaries, scapulars, all of those things, as well as the seven sacraments of the church, they speak to us of the love of God that's behind it. That our faith isn't just an idea. It's not just something that's in our head. It's actually something that is real, right? It's actually something that takes flesh. And so today, we're not gonna actually do the, the throat blessing over everybody, because we're still trying to be a little bit cautious about the pandemic, and we're, we didn't get really a chance to prepare everybody for it, but I will pray the prayer of the intercession of St. Blaise, the blessing over Deacon Joel, and then we will pray it over everyone together, and that'll come at the end of the intercessions. And then maybe next year, we'll kind of do a little bit better job preparing for it, and we can, uh, we can uh, do it for everybody, uh, throughout the whole school, throughout the whole community, and our eighth graders, you know, maybe you can find a, a St. Saint, uh, Saint Blaise blessing uh, somewhere else next year. So we ask God to renew in us uh, that love of his family, to make us really feel that we are part of that family, to know that we are part of that family of God, that we are the brothers and sisters of Jesus, and that all of those traditions, we would, we would make use of them. Uh, we would look forward to them, even if they might seem a little bit odd or they might seem like something extra that doesn't really make sense, to remember that the love of God is what's behind all of it. And so that same love of God would be in us even more today. And we ask, especially through that, uh, that great example and that great intercession of St. Blaise, the bishop and martyr, that we would be defended from everything, uh, from everything dangerous, that we would be preserved in the love of God and in love of each other. Formed by God's holy word, let us now turn to him in faithful prayer. For Pope Francis, our bishops, priests, and deacons, may they continue to be living examples of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For our parents, may they be recognized and appreciated for their sacrifices on behalf of our Catholic education. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the students at St. John the Baptist Catholic School, as we celebrate Catholic Schools Week, may we be reminded to reach towards academic excellence and grow in our faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our teachers, staff, and principal, may they continue their dedicated work in Catholic education. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those we have promised to pray for, and for all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, and for Kenneth Coleman. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. So we'll pray the prayer of blessing over Deacon Joel, but you can all make the sign of the cross as the prayer of blessing is prayed. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, bishop and martyr, may God deliver you and free you from every disease of the throat and from every other illness in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray. And by your grace, may we be set afire with that flame of your love, through which St. Blaise overcame every bodily torment, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith, to their endurance you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all, all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr blaze, faithful in your service and victorious in suffering through Christ our Lord. I hope everyone continues to have a great Catholic Schools Week. I'm a little bummed because I won't be here on Friday. It's my day away. I believe that's Jersey Day. Is that right? Yeah, and so I can't wear my, uh, my wild uh, jersey that's signed by Zach Parisi. It actually says, uh, to Father Little, praise be Jesus Christ, Zach Parisi. So maybe I'll take a picture and uh, put that up for, for everyone to see. Uh, but keep, uh, keep uh, celebrating this week. It's so good to, to be with a school community again. I've said that uh, many times now, uh, but I'm just so, so grateful to, to be with you and uh, to uh, be able to partake of the joy of, of celebrating uh, Catholic education. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.